This week's episode is brought to you by our friends at CISO, S-E-E-S-O dot com. CISO is an on-demand streaming comedy platform, comedy anytime, anywhere. Check out all of the original series, quotable classics, next day, late night, stand-up specials, and more. CISO is only $3.99 a month, and it's ad-free. Start your one-month free trial now. Available at CISO dot com, the iOS app store, Google Play Store, Roku, Xbox, and Amazon Video. Special welcome, somebody in the front row. She blew me a kiss. A charming, old-fashioned gesture. I can also hear people backstage in the monitor. It's unnerving. Because what if I dreamed those people back there? And then I introduce them and nobody comes out. And then we're all trapped in an old photo. the thing. At the end of The Shining. <laughs> was he frozen outside or was he trapped in an old photo? Had he always been there? And if so, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I have some notes on The Shining. Oh, if only they'd make a documentary where I could explain all my theories. Has anybody seen that fucking thing? But not like, not like the whole thing, right? You quit when I did? Ten minutes in? When you realize, oh, uh, I see what's gonna happen here. I got tricked by that movie, guys. I thought it was just gonna be about how Stanley Kubrick faked the moon landing. I thought that was the only theory. I didn't know, like, they, like, ha like we're driving cross country in a bus picking people up who had theories about The Shining. Like, come on, when the bus is full, we're gonna record your story. There's got to be a cap on conspiracy theories. <laughs> Whatever event it is, I'm going to say five max. That's it. Once it gets into six, it's like, oh, I wish you'd shown up sooner. Because that actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Sorry. You got to get in there early, guy. Got to get in there early. Now, everyone will assume a valid JFK assassination theory is, he had a cold. <laughs> and he stifled a sneeze, and he blew the back of his own head out. <laughs> Sorry, it's a valid conspiracy theory. Your thing about the CIA makes total sense. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. a show where I invite a special guest on to have a free-form conversation with me. How free-form? Look what I'm doing with my hands. <laughs> Inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest, then some improviser pals join me and we perform a narrative improv set that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. <laughs> I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as we do with our live performances of the show, I will first introduce you to our friends from the land of make-pretends. 
I am very pleased that tonight all of our improvisers are from Detroit. Ladies and gentlemen, they are all members of the 313. First up, please welcome Naima Funk. Naima, yes. thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to be here. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. You get, you get back here fairly often? Uh, yeah, but I don't tell people I'm in town. Cause, no, you know, not that often, but summertime, definitely. Yeah. And who, there are some people that are on the do not fly list socially when you come back home. That you can't let them know. Well, yeah. <laughs> because then it'll be like, let's do a thing that's I inconvenient for you, but very convenient for me. Yes. And we call those people family. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, uh, I have a huge family, so I have to love them all. Um, <laughs> you know what? I'm very fortunate. I have my huge family in Ann Arbor, and I have my huge family in the Detroit, Dearborn, Ferndale, Hamtramck area of um, improvisers who are all family. Is Hamtramck a thing? <laughs> you know that sounds what? like a local joke. It, it's, um, it's, it's... <laughs> Did you enjoy that one, Mark? Yeah. I'm glad. Glad. Um, it is, it is, it, Hamtramck is spelled like a uh, confirmation code. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, one of those captcha things yeah, that captcha. you gotta. Yeah, one of those. It's a things. good captcha. Yeah, it's a great one. Like, <laughs> does that fucking ham really? Oh, what the hell? Um, but yeah, ham, yeah, that's a. It's a nice place. <laughs> it is. It is. It. I mean, what? What is it nice? What's that? DCFC. Hmm? DCFC. Family. I got my family. Hi, mom. <laughs> what does DCFC mean, do you know? Uh, don't come fucking... <laughs> Cunts. I don't know. <laughs> DCFC. <laughs> Detroit City Ferndale Community. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, Detroit Community of Freaky Compilation Makers. <laughs> Are you a big mixtaper? And now. Uh, we'll never know. Never know. Aw, mixtapes. Remember mixtapes? Remember mixtapes. Man, oh man. Those were awesome. Guys, it used to be a physical thing. It's where, not just a term. Right. Where you had to, like, record it, like, push the buttons. Yeah. And then listen to it in an order. Yes. Remember that? You had to listen to the entire song. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that was awesome. It, and you had to get the timing just right. Oh, yeah. You don't yeah. want a song to cut off at the end. You yeah. don't want to have a whole lot of dead space at the end either. Yes. Did you ever record uh, songs off the radio? You mean holding a tape recorder up yeah. to the radio? Yeah. Oh, yes, I did. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes. Oh, I was so good at that. I was like a DJ. I mean, I'm like, my shit was like, oh, coming up next, whatever they're going to play. <laughs> oh, y'all. This one goes <laughs> out to whoever's listening. I love the idea yes. of the third party DJ. <laughs> yes, that was me. Coming up yo, next, yo. whatever they're going to play. <laughs> That's right. Yo, they're doing traffic and weather and we're listening. What's up? Here we go. But that whole, that whole system of <laughs> just holding a tape recorder yeah. up to the radio, yeah. it was great because my favorite genre of music was music I'm overhearing from another room. <laughs> <laughs> you would play it back. I love it. A lot of ambient room tone in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. 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 He listens to oldie music. It's I old. love tacos, my favorite artist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Putting on the Ritz. But I do have to say, Detroit has the best radio stations in the country. Guys, is that true? Yeah. And probably, therefore, the world, because... Come on. This is the greatest country Because we're the greatest country in the world, right? Proving it again and again lately. Right? I know. Oh, <laughs> my God. My God. Tell ya. Hey, rest of the world, do you get it yet? Yeah. We're awesome. We are awesome. Naomi, if you could live in any other country in the world, where would you live? You know, I used to think Rio. 
I'm so mad. I, I used to be like, oh, Rio, that's the place, but now it's like, ugh. So, I would say... What um, is it about Rio that turned you off? Um, is it the raw sewage in the water? No, no. No, it's, it's water. It should have stuff. Um, I, I, um, I think it was... Um, Yeah, yeah, like, oh, I know, it was watching them do the torch and run the torch and just people running up out of anywhere and just cold cocking the, the, the torch person and just throwing water on the torch. And I mean, that, that was like gangster and like, hey, y'all are crazy. Put that energy into creativity, Rio. Yeah. Jeez. Um, so now I think I would really like to live in like Switzerland or somewhere like that where there's like only three other black people. Thank you, Switzerland. Let's stop here to talk about piercing whistles. Yo, yo, coming up next, he about to play piercing whistles, yo. Piercing whistles, that's I, our shit. I went to a, a Dodgers game recently. You did? Yes, and uh, I will never go again. Why? Um, the Dodgers fans are the worst fans. Oh. Uh, and uh, there was a guy who was leading the Let's Go Dodgers chant. I'm going to say every 45 seconds, <laughs> the, the Dodgers were up by like 10 runs. Like, the Dodgers are already They're, there. You do not need to encourage we them. We went Dodgers. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Y'all Stay where you are, Dodgers. <laughs> exactly. But then he would also punctuate it with uh, a loud piercing whistle, which I bet... I'm not a guy who can do one of those whistles. I can't either. I bet it feels really good to do it, right? I think it, it's, I like bet it's, it's like a fart. It's like a fart. It's like a release. <laughs> sure. I'm, a, I'm assuming. Yeah. It, it, it's right? much like that in that it's entirely unwelcome. <laughs> yeah. And all, and all for the person doing it. All for the person it's doing it. It's all about the person doing yes. it. You yeah, know, yeah. Nobody needs to hail a cab that way. They're cabs. <laughs> They're looking for people to pick up. You think exactly. like, oh, shit. I wouldn't have known if you hadn't whistled. Damn. Naima, please take a seat back there. Yes. Naima Funk, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is if I were a fawn like Mr. Tumnus. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Nancy Hayden! Yeah. Hi, everybody. Nancy, please, have a seat. Yay. Thank you. Nancy, welcome. This is your Spontaneous Nation debut. It is. How are you feeling so far? So far, fantastic. And cooler. It is cooler out here than it is... 10 feet that way. It's mm -hmm. nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's nice out pleasant, here. Very pleasant out here. Now, Nancy, are you from the area? I am from the area. I was born in Detroit. Mm -hmm. I grew up about an hour north of Detroit in mm. a town called Grand Blank. It's bright Grand by Flint. You may have heard of Flint recently. <laughs> And uh, for the last, uh, well, I live in Los Angeles now, but before I moved to Los Angeles, I spent eight years living in Ferndale, Michigan. What's Nancy, that? that's where we are right this I very know. second. I lived, I, know. I lived beneath this stage. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, are you the phantom? <laughs> the phantom of the magic yep. bag. <laughs> <laughs> Just my luck. That would be the phantom I'd get to be. <laughs> now, what, what do you think is like the big leagues for a phantom? Yeah, well, I mean, the opera's pretty big, but I'd say sure. beyond that, you know, uh, the Met could be good. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Right? Phantom of the Met. Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall would be good, yeah. Or, or maybe like an Olympic stadium, like an old abandoned Olympic stadium. I feel like that's so big you get lost in the yeah, sauce, maybe. you know what I mean? Yeah, the music would just yeah. pipe organ music. <laughs> of course, as everyone knows, every phantom plays pipe organ music. Right. That's right. No matter where they're haunting. They're all gifted, yeah. talented musicians. Now, how often do you get back to this I area? I get back for lately pretty often. I've been spending a lot of my summer here, actually. And why is that, Nancy? I know, but tell them. <laughs> because I've been working as a writer for a new television show that's going to be on Comedy Central called Detroiters. How about it? How about it? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. 
I can take practically no credit, but I will take it all. Thank you very much. This show so, is yeah. set in Detroit, it and it's about Detroit, people who live there. And it's about a couple of Detroiters, which makes sense. Inspired by true events? By, by some true events, sort of, kind of. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it, uh, it's played by uh, two of our good friends, Tim Robinson and Sam Richardson, are the stars of the show. <laughs> of our, uh, our Second City Detroit pals, and they play best friends, so that part's absolutely true, because they're just, they're, they're in comedy love with one another. That's wonderful to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they play a couple of small-time ad guys. So the real fun is we get to rip on all those local ads, guys. <laughs> what, yeah. were, what was your favorite local ad growing up? Um, well, I, yeah, I love a lot of them, but, you know, the, it, it, so we had this thing called, uh, this gentleman named Mel Farr. <laughs> You guys know. Big, big Mel Far crowd. Yeah. He was a, he is a, uh, he's a, a former athlete from the sure. city of Detroit and he owned a car dealership. And so he got to do some ads where they put a cape on his back. Uh huh. And he would, what would he do? He would fly. Sure. He would fly in the ads, mm -hmm. but it was like they could only let him fly for about eight seconds because it was like the 80s and, and <laughs> I guess the effects were so poor. Right. So we'd have to shove all of his lines for the end of the commercial <laughs> into the. So he'd go, so come on down to Mount Fire Superstar for a five minute deal! And he'd like have to shove it all into. And it, it never looked like he was flying. It looked like they were throwing him into a building <laughs> at high speed. Was he on wires or was he just laying on a table and kicking his legs to make it simulate flight? I'm gonna guess the latter. I was not on set, but I'm gonna guess it was. <laughs> well, I, I feel like you can usually tell if someone's actually hovering in space somehow. Yeah, that's true. Or, or like, if, did they make the cape move at all? Yeah, the cape would, would ruffle a little bit. <laughs> they would lift it, lift it out behind him. Yeah. Do you think it was a fan or do you think it was on strings? Oh, wow, that's a really good question. I want to see this strings. commercial. Don't you think strings? Yeah, strings, we think. We We're getting confirmation strings. it was probably strings. <laughs> <We're getting laughs> is Mel, so it, will there be a Melfar type? There is a Melfar like commercial. I'm glad to hear that. I will tell you and that. Is, and I hate to oh boy. potentially bring us down, but mm. is Mr. Farr still with us? No. Are you? Oh, I thought for a second now you were saying he's backstage. <laughs> he's, he's, he is with us. Yes. Ladies he's and gentlemen, laying Mel on Farr. a table. <laughs> no, I don't believe he is. Do you <laughs> the think Phantom, the do you, Phantom is confirming that for us? Do you think he haunts a car dealership? <laughs> that would be cool. That maybe that's the biggest of all big times for Phantoms. <laughs> Car dealerships. It's nice and compact. Yeah, it's nice and compact. Everybody's in there. Probably good acoustics. <laughs> and at night, at night you could play around in the cars. That's right. Yeah. Hey, don't tell it to me. Tell it to Bob Seger, who recorded all of his albums in a car dealership. <laughs> That's right. Nancy Hayden, ladies That's and right. gentlemen. Thank you. Let's mix it up, guys. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I think that was real. Now here, folks, just so you know, Mark's microphone <laughs> is the only microphone that interferes with another piece of sound equipment on the stage. So we have to go over here and do our little chat. How are you, man? How, how are you? It's good to see you. It's good to see you, Paul. Am I? Yeah, there we are. Uh, I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm real good. Real good. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> now, Mark, are you originally from the area? You know the answer to that, Paul. I don't remember, though. Uh, no. <laughs> You're, were you born in a weird place? Yes, Buffalo, New York. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a snow farm. snow farm. 12 month snow farm, yeah. Uh, no, I, I grew up in Buffalo, New York. I went to school here in Michigan, uh, and then... Where'd you go to school again? I went to uh, Calvin College in... It's real! <laughs> <laughs> That's a real place. That's not where... <laughs> Archie was thinking of going to school. <laughs> it's real. It exists in the world. It's still there. 
Uh, and then I moved to Detroit in 1997 to join the Second City, mm -hmm. uh, the now defunct Second City, Detroit. Do you feel that you <laughs> caused it? To... Beginning of the end. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm solely responsible for the demise of the Second City, Detroit. Yes. Is the building still there? It is. Oh, yeah. What is it now? It is what it was always meant to be, a sports bar. <laughs> Do you think there are any improv phantoms there? Uh, there are sad souls. I don't know that there are improv phantoms. Um, I remember the beginning of the end being when they changed the third floor, which is uh, like a lab space for us, a black box theater, into something called the five hole. Uh, <laughs> And they would host oh, five hole. It's yeah. is that a play on something? It's sports. <laughs> okay, okay. You know what? You know what? <laughs> uh, and uh, forgot about America's pastime, hockey. <laughs> we could hear uh, dance music coming down. We'd be doing very emotional, uh, hilarious scenes, and could hear dance music coming down the I beams. <laughs> Strike it up. I'll take it. <laughs> Those aren't the words. Those aren't the words. Strike it up. I'll take it. Are not the words. Strike it up. Wrap it up. Strike it up. Your There's wrap it up. I'll take it by the fabulous thunder. Wait, other. Oh, wrap it up. Yeah. I wanna. Woo! I wanna. Yeah. Hey, y'all, coming Woo! up next. <laughs> On 105.1. Mark Go, go. <laughs> Mark Evan Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a little break. When we return, we will meet our special guest for the evening and conduct an interview. Uh, see you on the other side, friends. Semper Fi. <laughs> Harry's Razors. It's been a long time, old friends. It's been a long time, but you're still there. I'm still here. And occasionally, we do business together trying to help people. That's right. Harry's Razors. Look, big razor companies, they're changing up their dumb razors and blades all the time. They're adding these different things to them. It, I mean, they're competing with uh, giving Apple a run for their money. You know what I'm saying? In terms of changing up the thing that you already have. So you got to buy new stuff all the time. Harry's doesn't believe in this kind of nonsense. They make their razors even better, and they're keeping the prices exactly the same. Okay? They've modified their things, and it's not going to put you in the poor house. Also, if razors are putting you in the poor house, that, I mean, that's an exaggeration. You sh that shouldn't be happening. You shouldn't be going to debtor's prison. First of all, that's been abolished. Get a load of what Harry's has done. Their five blade razors now include softer flex hinge for a more comfortable glide, a trimmer blade for hard to reach places, a lubricating strip, and a textured handle for more control when it's wet. So it's not like slipping out of your hand, you're cutting your own throat. Ugh. Or legs, ladies. Or men who shave their legs, swimmers. <laughs> or men who just like to look nice in a pair of stockings. Look. Razors are for everybody, except kids. If there are kids listening to this, and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to buy razors, I listen to podcast ads, my parents don't even know. No, I forbid you to do it. You go sit down. Harry's Blades, they're still just $2 per blade compared to $4 or more you will pay at the drugstore. Don't I know it? Because Harry's owns the factory in Germany where they make the blades so they can produce high-quality razors themselves and sell them online for half of the price. Other razor companies, where are they getting their razors from? <sighs> North Korea, I bet. Harry's is so confident in the quality of their blades, they will send you their popular free trial set, which comes with a razor, five-blade cartridge, shaving gel. It's great. It's a perfect compact little thing. If you're like me, you like stuff like this, like you enjoy... That sort of thing, like having nice things for everyday functions. This is great. You will love this. 
It is free. This box is free when you sign up for a shave plan and you just pay the shipping. Plus, there is a special offer for fans of the show. Enter code PFT at checkout to get a post-shave balm added to your order for free. That's a nice thing to do sometimes. It feels good. Go to harrys.com right now. Enter code PFT at checkout to claim your free trial set. You go there, plant your flag, and say, this is mine, this free trial set. You get a free trial set, post-shave bomb, all for sticking your flag in the Harry's dirt. That is harrys.com, and that code is PFT. If you can't remember that, I don't know what to tell you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, our special guest this evening has been on the show before, but is making his debut as an interview guest. Mm. <laughs> shut, shut up. <laughs> we're, I know, we're, we're so on the edge of children's theater, I understand. <laughs> we gotta stay on the other side of the line. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Craig Kakowski! Craig, not bad. That is a nice response. A lot of cack attackers yeah. out there. <laughs> <laughs> One woman was so excited she yelled out uh, DCFC. <laughs> Which, of course, is damn Craig fucking Kikowski. Of course. But traditionally, we only do that when I come out. So right. next time, she couldn't help herself. get that timing right. <laughs> Craig! <laughs> I have a question for you, but uh, before I ask the question from our previous week's hmm. guest, I want to ask you, how do you feel about being in this chair for a change? It's a strange vantage point. Because <laughs> so many times I've been back there yeah. watching the person in this chair sweat over a philosophical question, and of course I'm like, come on, I know exactly what I'd say if I was in that seat. Right. It's Why like, are you freezing up? It's such an easy question. It's like watching Jeopardy or whatever. Yes. You're like, this is easy, but they're, they're on TV and the question thing. I know I would, <laughs> I would panic if I was on Jeopardy. I know I would. Do you think you would? I think you would do quite well. Really? Yes. yes. I think I'd do. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. Great. Yeah, you <laughs> Come on, yeah, guys. Come on, guys. Hey, we all agree. You're, a, you're a weirdo. You have a All right, thing. thank you. You belong on Jeopardy. <laughs> I think where weirdos belong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jeopardy, why don't you relax the contestant rules and open it up to non weirdos for a change? <laughs> I think you're going to be okay with this question. I don't think it's going to cause you to freeze up. Okay. That question. Is it from, from the our, previous guest? It's from the previous guest. Okay. Craig, are you curious? As All right. Paul. <laughs> of our previous guest? Paul, this is not my first rodeo. I know this is a trap. It is a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. But <laughs> is it possible that you know, since I've been on the show before, maybe this is the one time you're going to actually say who the guest was? You'll never so, know. Till uh, you... Okay, I have to say then, I have to say, Paul, I would like to know who that previous guest was. Well, then, Craig, I would direct you and the listener. God the... damn it! <laughs> On Tandy Nation Archive at oh. Howard.fm. Hours of listening pleasure. He got you. me. <laughs> Craig, our question from last week's guest is, do you still eat pudding as an adult? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my God, he's sweating bullets. Oh. I've never seen anyone. I did not realize you had Mr. Cosby on the show. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thanks. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks. Great by get, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I, know that he, I know that he had his people call Earwolf and say, like, anything you got, I'm happy to get in there. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Cosby is now open to doing podcasts? <laughs> um, the, the short answer is yes, I still eat pudding. Sure. How often would you say you eat pudding? <laughs> I'd say I'd have two puddings a year. <laughs> It seems 
entirely reasonable. <laughs> and I, I, mean, t- I talked to my doctor about it. <laughs> and he's like, I wouldn't push it into three puddings. No. <laughs> but one, one doesn't seem like you're a pudding eater. So <laughs> split, split the difference. Is it a seasonal thing? <laughs> well, you know, in L- L- L.A., we're very farm to table <laughs> there. So, you know, there is a pudding season, yes. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you the... I'll tell you the Hold on a okay, second, okay, asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant was, is it like a Thanksgiving or a Christmas oh, oh. thing? <laughs> Not like, did they go to the pudding farm and pick them <laughs> from the pudding trees? Yes. <laughs> And how recently was this harvested? <laughs> I'll, I'll wait. So I'll wait till it till I it matures. Those, oh, I hate when those puddings are full of pesticides. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, it's typically when I'll go to a, to an Italian place that has a budino, a butterscotch pudding. There we go. And uh, there's a great place in L.A. Pizzeria Mozza. See. Si. Uh, <laughs> and I will absolutely get their budino every time because it's so damn good. Now, are you only going to this restaurant twice a year? <laughs> Not even that. Once a year, maybe. And then there's, there's a place in our neighborhood mm-hmm. that also serves a good budino. The devil, you say. The devil, I say. Craig and I live in the same neighborhood, guys. Yes. That's a little behind-the-scenes fun. We can't reveal where this is. Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, there, are, there are boundaries, people. Well, I don't want these people depleting the pudding stores. <laughs> <laughs> for, for LA season, which is coming up. Yep. Um, are there, what was a food that you ate as a kid that you don't, you, you can't eat anymore? Like just the thing you loved maybe that you, you like it, yeah, have you had that experience where it turned, where all of a sudden like this is disgusting? I don't know that I've had that because I had such a limited palate as a kid. I was super, super picky. Meat and potatoes? Meat and potatoes, basically. Hot dogs, hamburger. I loved hot dog bean soup was my favorite. (laughs) (laughs) Which is, it was like a Campbell's bean soup with chunks of hot dog in there. Oh, you didn't even have to cut up the hot dog. It was already in there. Oh, it was already in there. Yeah. (laughs) Mrs. Campbell had it ready for me. I don't know. Well, that was that was unsavory. <laughs> Craig, you remind me of a story. A roommate of mine years ago went to a friend of ours house um, apartment. We were all in our twenties, and so we were all disgusting. And uh, as you are, yes. And so our mutual friend uh, had was making some food. And he was making, I think it was macaroni and cheese with hot dogs cut up in it. And uh, he asked my friend, would you like some? I'll make you some. <laughs> and she said, sure. And then she could see into the kitchen. She, I guess he, didn't, he wasn't aware that he could be seen. He was not cutting up the hot dogs. He was no. biting no. these no. hot dogs. No, 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 no. And no. spitting them into no, the back no, of the no, 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 why? Where's the whistle guy? This is an, an adult human being? 20s. 20s, yeah. sure, when you're still a monster. But you should. Yeah. <laughs> but, there, but knives had been invented to give you context historically. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think well, I remember. You, you can even get a, a pair of scissors, I think. You cut up a hot dog. <laughs> sure. Not ideal, but better than the mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the motto of scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Not ideal, but better than the mouth. <laughs> right. Scissors are sold in stores to this day. <laughs> when I was a kid, I loved circus peanuts. Ugh. I was yeah. a child. Sure. <laughs> Until one time, I ate a whole bag of them. <laughs> and then I've never eaten one again. And the consistency is marshmallow, basically, or marshmallow? It's like, <laughs> good catch. <laughs> By the way, Marsh, my favorite type of mallow. <laughs> the consistency was like a, like a sort of hardened marshmallow yeah. that you, you, had to, you had to like bite it. It wasn't, 
It wasn't chewy in the way yeah. the marshmallow was. It was it was its own thing, its own disgusting thing. Is, <laughs> is it supposed to replicate the feeling of going to the circus? I don't know because <laughs> the shapes were things like a corn cob or a pea pod. Like, but so to trick you that this might be a vegetable. Yeah. I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> that it has some the, nutritional yeah, value. I don't yeah. get it. I don't get it. I don't know if parents thought. I guess it's the same thing. So now he's eating vegetables. <laughs> I don't know who this was. Why it was not. Who's a fun, the target audience for? Yes, circus exactly. Because yeah. it's not a fun thing for kids. Like I'm eating peas. <laughs> <laughs> but but I I can still. It doesn't. It's not difficult for me to conjure the taste in my mouth and be. Slightly sick. Yeah. To think about it. What was the turning point where? Oh, I was eating that bag. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> From that story one minute ago. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's why you're in the interviewer chair, yeah, my right. friend. You yeah. are not required to pay attention. <laughs> and what was it? Circus peanuts? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you see it? Uh, yeah, I didn't expand my palate till many years later, and now I'll eat anything. But how did you do it? You just you just decided one day I have to do this. There were th like I didn't even eat cheese on my burgers when I was a kid. I loved pizza, but I would only eat pepperoni pizza. Uh, cheese. I don't think I had a cheeseburger until I was in my late teens. You like food to look like drawings of food. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted. Yeah, it's got to be just like it is in the yeah. picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like those cereal commercials where the milk is actually glue or whatever. Yikes. Because <laughs> of like milk yeah. can't get the proper white <laughs> right. texture. You know, Ice cream that they mashed want. potatoes. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Guys, this mm. is all inside stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Little bit of showbiz. <laughs> yeah. All commercial ice cream, mashed potatoes. <laughs> all mashed potatoes, sorbet. That's right. <laughs> What was, the, what was the most surprising thing for you personally that you were able to not only make yourself eat but acquire a taste for? Mm. That when you were a kid, you could not have imagined ever eating this thing. Because <laughs> I, I would say for me, it was Brussels sprouts. I just had a bowl full of Brussels sprouts <laughs> at One Eyed Betty's. <laughs> I can get in the local references as well. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, and they were damn good. Brussels sprouts are a recent thing for me because now, Welcome like now, they'll fry them and burn them up and put bacon in there and put <laughs> tons of balsamic and all that stuff to make them good. Wait a minute, that, that's so the key to all of this. <laughs> it's like you went from being a picky eater to just just put the things I already like on the things I don't like. Yeah, <laughs> fry it with bacon and I'm good. <laughs> what? So for me, that was like a big threshold to cross. Brussels sprouts. What was one for you? Hmm. The so easy. <laughs> uh, su sushi was my early 30s. Mm -hmm. So I've been a sushi eater for about 15 years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's hard to admit. It's hard to admit. And it's just... Uh, I, I didn't imagine myself eating raw fish, which usually it's not raw. You know, most yeah. of the time it is not. It is, yeah, yeah. you know, cooked in some way. Or... Did you like it the first time that you tried it? I really liked it the first time I tried it, but it was like, uh, it was like baked salmon with cream cheese in there. <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, <laughs> why was sushi not in my life? It's amazing, <laughs> you know? What is the thing that you have yet to try? Mm. You know, there's a street in uh, Los Angeles uh, called Little Ethiopia, mm -hmm. where there's all these Ethiopian places, and I feel like there's a lot of ethnic cuisines that I'll, you know, there was somebody to initiate me into that. Like, I just don't want to show up as a rube and be exposed okay. as a rube. I don't right. want the Ethiopian community staring at me. I'm like, this guy clearly has no idea of how to order here, you know? He asked for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's all like stews and then bread, and you just like, you know, pick it up with the bread and shove it in your mouth. You Are know? you afraid it's going to be like that scene from that Indiana Jones movie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chilled like, monkey brain. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just eyeballs in a broth. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to be. Yeah. So that's your. You have yet to do that. Yeah. So uh, L.A. people initiate me into Ethiopian when I get back to town. You want to get jumped into Ethiopian? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just gonna like a gang of guys just gonna pick me up, put a hood over my head, That's right. throw me in the back of the truck, and next thing I'm in Addis Ababa. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. What is Addis Ababa? <laughs> Frank Kikowski, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> from Craig Kogowski, and then we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns! This week's show is sponsored by our friends at CISO. Hey guys, that's right, you heard me sing correctly. This week's episode is brought to you by CISO, S-E-E-S-O dot com, that they are an all comedy ad free streaming TV service and they are made for the serious comedy fan. I presume that's you. See, so what do they got? Oh, hey, before I pay for this, I want to know what they have. Oh, what a, what, a, what a smart consumer you are. Well, genius. <laughs> Is this the worst kind of pitch? Hey, you're dumb for asking a smart question. Here's what they got. They got new original series. They got quotable classics. They got late night from the night before. A day old. It's great. And stand-up specials. Let me tell you. They got hilarious original series that you don't want to miss. These guys, they are getting into business with extremely creative people. And now is the time to jump on board. So you can say that you were their first Matt Gorley's new podcast. What do they got? They got things like Harmon Quest with Dan Harmon. He created Community Rick and Morty, then he created this show. He's in this one. It's Dan and his friends, funny friends, and they're going through the world of fantasy role playing. It's improv comedy and, you know, D and D mashed up together, and it works. It's live action and animation. It's a hilarious show. I got to be on the first episode. Full disclosure. And I couldn't be happier about it. It's an extremely funny show. They also have amazing stand-up specials from Brian Posehn, Wyatt Snack, Roy Scovel, Matt Besser, Big Jay Okerson. Little Jay Okerson? Well, he went with Yahoo Screen. Big mistake, Little Jay. You blew it. Also, they have a show near and dear to my heart, Bajillion Dollar Properties. Jillian Dollar Properties, if you're not familiar with it, this is a, uh, it's like Reno 911 meets million dollar properties, million dollar brokers, whatever. I don't, I don't watch those shows. <laughs> I watch this show that makes fun of that show. Okay. It's uh, a, a cast of amazingly talented improvisers, a semi-scripted show like Reno 911. Um, all of these people have appeared on this podcast that you're listening to now. Dan Adut, Tim Baltz, Ryan Gall, Mandel Mon, Tony Newsom, and Drew Tarver. There. I did it alphabetically. Created by Kula Vilaisak. God damn. I know how to pronounce her name. I do it right all the time. Kula Vilaisak. And me. I'm in it. I play the head of Platinum Realty, where all these creeps work. And backstab each other and stuff. It's a really, really funny show. Amazing guest stars. Season two is this Thursday. It drops the whole, all of season two drops this Thursday on CISO. We got guest stars like Zach Galifianakis, Weird Al Yankovic, Nick Kroll. So many great people. You got to check out the show. I'm very proud to be a part of it. Here's what you do. Knowing that CISO has a ton of awesome comedy, you go to CISO.com and you start your free trial today. That is Right. CISO is giving you a month completely free. S-E-E-S-O dot com. I'll see you when I kiss your mom. Ooh! Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation! Yeah! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't go anywhere, and neither did you. It is now time to do our improv before I reveal the location provided to us by Mr. Craig Kikowski. Just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects 
that move us about in time. Let's say <laughs> we're in a scene, we want to find out what's happening at the exact same time somewhere else. A meanwhile, if you will, you will hear this cut to sound effect. Whoosh, we're over there. It's red, as if to say, stop. Let's find out what's happening somewhere else. Let's say someone is having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. You'll hear this flashback sound effect. See, the harp is going backwards, kind of, right? You can hear it. And it, the button is yellow, as if to say, let's slow down. How did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say we would need to return from the flashback to the present day or travel to the mysterious future. We will hear this flash forward sound effect. See how the vibes progress as if going forward. Green means go forward. Let's we'll see. Any one of our improvisers can touch these buttons at any time except Mark Evan Jackson who is scared of them. <laughs> Yes. That's where the phantom lives. The phantom lives in the buttons. What? <laughs> phantom, get out of there! We're doing a show right now. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to reveal our location provided to us by Craig Kakowski, and that location is the other side of the tracks. <laughs> All right. We take you now to the other side of the tracks. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> using these scissors to get this can of beans open. Why don't you use your mouth? <laughs> because you gave me these scissors for Christmas last year and you said no more using your mouth on the beans. Okay. Okay. I, just, I know that's what you like to do. It's who you are. I just thought I'd class myself up a little bit. Hey, girl, don't class yourself up. It ain't you. Well, it's your birthday. Mm. Thought maybe we'd make things a little special around here. I couldn't get the bean soup with the hot dogs in it. Dang. So I thought the least I could do would be to bring, you know, some scissors down and just cut the beans open for a change instead of gnawing on the can. Dang. Just because we live on the other side of the tracks doesn't mean we have to be other side of the tracks, people. And then right through here is where there'll be a lane dedicated solely to Segway human transporters. <laughs> oh, it's very exciting. Who are those people over there? Oh, uh, well, they... We, they won't be here later. Oh. Well, Good. that's wonderful to hear. Hello. One of them is chewing on a tin can. We don't have any money for you. Sorry, just passing through. I recognize you. No, You're problem. that guy from yeah. the billboard. What? Yes, that's from crazy the, from talk. The, uh, billboards. From the, from the yeah. Mel Farr commercial. <laughs> that's right. You're the guy that holds the cape. He holds the cape, right? Uh, that's, that is where my career began. Yeah. But things are Mr. Hammontrack, is this true? <laughs> I'm afraid so, Mr. Dobenshield. I did used to have a career before I was in mega development. I, uh, and it, this career was, if I'm led to believe this is true, cape holding? <laughs> All right, we're back in. Uh, I, I, need just, I need just a minute. I need just a minute. Hey, well, need... just get on his position and we'll shoot the commercial. <laughs> now remember at the end. We don't have a lot of time. You've got to get the words out as quickly as possible. You gave me like three pages of copy. There's no way I'm going to be getting all that I stuff. I know. These, oh. these goddamn writers, they're in love with their own words. All right. I'll it's, get it in. I'll get it in. Right. I'm a very busy commercial director. <laughs> yes, yes. I have to make a come here dog commercial in about two hours. Got you. Uh, Mel, you're a superstar. Just want to let you know that. Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> Looking going. good, Mel. Yeah, Mel, it's you. You're the superstar. All right. I need hey. the... Hey! You, cape guy. I need the cape to be believable. I want waves. I want it to look as though it's on strings. Not like someone's just holding it. Yeah. <laughs> the last guy, the last guy, he just looked like he was holding it. That's why he got fired. We fired five cape guys this year. Say, save your breath, Mel. Save your breath. And we're going... Ready? Five, four, four, three, three, 
Mail for superstar for a far better deal. Far superstar. Come on down to Mail Far where we got so many cars. We got these. We got us. We, we got fun. We got, got so, We got so many fucking cars. It's unbelievable. You gonna drive this car? It's gonna go right out of the lot. And it's gonna, and it's gonna have wheels. And it's also got a trunk. And there's a radio, just a radio. Nothing other than that. It's amazing. And uh, yeah, these ones, the antenna goes straight up. And all these cars are there. Mel, you all right? You all right, Mel? You all right? You okay? What the hell oh. happened out there? What he has two and a half more pages to go. Jesus. I want to unionize. What? <laughs> yeah. I worked just a couple of days. And you took all that sweet cape money and you became a real estate developer. I know you. You're the one who's changing this whole neighborhood into condos. Improving. We're improving this neighborhood. There'll be places for you to live. Uh -uh. The yeah. reservoir. You stay on your side of the tracks. That's right. One day we're going to have a house with a wall. That's right. <laughs> Just you wait and see. Uh-huh. I got a far better deal for you. I... Mel Farr. I believe I'm being threatened. Yeah. Mr. Hammontrack, in light of these recent developments, I'm afraid I cannot invest in your scheme. But, but, a good but, day, but, Mr. Hammond. That's right. But. That's right. God damn it. Want some beans? Fine. You know, what the <laughs> fuck? Hey, man. You just reached into an open tire fire. Hey. Grabbed a can of beans. It don't hurt me. I got skin made of leather. We don't have any like, bowls. Yeah. We spent all of our bowl money on scissors. Oh. This again, every time. I'll just say it. Okay, so I made some bad investments. In any case, I think I can make this worth your while. I have a, I have another investor coming. He's unusual. <laughs> Really? I don't want to go into it, but he's... He did three and a half weeks on Jeopardy. <laughs> oh. oh! Oh, damn! <laughs> is, is this the place? Uh, I can only talk in the form of questions. Can I only talk in the yeah. form of questions? <laughs> that guy. Do you live here? Yes, yeah. I'll throw down a rope and you can climb up if you'd like. <laughs> Man, I watched every... Are we pulling each other? I'm pulling you. <laughs> I got you. Are we pulling each other? Right. Come on. Damn, every time. Yo, Salvatore, you was the shit on Jeopardy. You really was. Wow, a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan. You what? have TV. No. <laughs> No, nah, the people a uh, couple doors down did, and I put a cup to the window and listened to it. <laughs> what? Nothing. Like that doesn't happen? <laughs> Honey, I think they're out there again. What are they doing exactly? They're, they listen to our television from their tree got fort a cup. house. Anybody got a cup? I mean, they should be paying half our cable bill, really. I should think so. Yes. 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 <laughs> Assertive, maybe you should go out there and talk to them. Grab what is the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo? Oh, I, I missed that one. Oh, I missed it too. Salvatore's on a real street. He's fantastic. Who is M. Emmett Walsh? Oh, oh honey, I can, I can see her over there. She's oh. not sure which way the cup goes. Oh, look, I, was, I think I was listening to myself there for a little while. <laughs> Dang, when Salvatore gives his answers, it's like I am listening to It's the saddest to thing I've ever seen. It's it's like, <laughs> what is 47, Alex? Oh, that is correct. <laughs> Maybe we should just invite her and her little bean-eating friend inside oh, to watch Jeopardy with us. I don't know about that. I mean, I want to be more assertive, but I think that would really be a test to have them in here in you're the right. home. And Please, no, you're right, you're right. Who right. are Marlon, Jackie, Tito, Jermaine, Michael, Randy? Yes! Latoya, Reby, oh and God, Janet. Everybody forgets about Marlon. I kept the cup. 
man. <laughs> I got it anchored. Come you got on. it. Come on up. Come on up. Climb up. Please Ow. don't. Please don't harm my investee. Uh -oh. Just right. okay. Welcome into the, the side of our house room. <laughs> Will people be living under these conditions? Uh, no, uh, not at all. Sorry. No, that once... Where will the segways be? That'll be slightly to the east in what we're calling the promenade. It's currently where they store the cinder blocks. <laughs> you mean the beds. I'm sorry. <laughs> the beds. Yeah. Will there be an all-pudding restaurant? <laughs> we, there can be, yes. We hadn't thought of that. A locavore, small plates, pudding only. <laughs> Vegan? <laughs> Wouldn't that be difficult? You know, as a child, I had a, a pudding. <laughs> we called it something stupid. <laughs> we called it Budino. <laughs> what is this? It's called Budino, what? <laughs> <laughs> Is there more to that story? I want a new nanny. Um, I want a new charge, okay? That's what I call you, my charge. Okay? Okay. Ooh. Don't do the neck thing. Only I can do. Th oh, oh, ooh! You gonna be famous one day. I can tell. I can just tell by how you move yourself. Mm. I want a new nanny. <laughs> That's it. telling you, it isn't going to all be pudding restaurants and cinder block beds. It is if you want, Salvatore. No, nah, that's what he told us. He was like, hot dogs that's everywhere. Right. Pre-cut, like Mrs. Campbell's gonna be moving in and just cutting hot dogs all day. Yeah. And we were happy about it, because we love Mrs. Campbell. Right. What will happen to these nice people? That's what we want to know. Yeah. Plenty of good things. Again, there are other places for you to live. Why we're looking right now at where the nuclear plant was, and it seems as though there's acreage that you can have. Didn't there... that have three meltdowns last month? Yes, but it's not open anymore. <laughs> it's available. Oh shit, another meltdown. Again? It's <gasps> hot in here. Can you feel it? We should, um... We should get the, um, the thing. They told us what Shit. to do last time, and it's just, it's, it, it's gone. It's righty, loosey, righty, tidy, lefty, tidy. Drink beer before liquor. You're in the clear. Yeah. They um, came in, and they were like, it's so simple. It's written right on the wall. Right. Hey, no. yeah. not to change subject, but <laughs> does this mole look new? <laughs> We will give you $100 to move. $100? <gasps> uh, the whole, all? Wait, for, for, for both for of us? To, to share? To, uh, one more. All right. Oh, my God. Oh, see? I told you. you I did? told you. It's you my told birthday. It's your birthday. It's my birthday. It's your birthday. And good thing to have my birthday. Don't finally oh. Don't think of the thing. Don't think of the thing. It's the phantom. <laughs> It's not Phantom. Uh, it's a me. Uh, it's a me, Budino. Budino. Is that Budino? Yeah, yeah Budino. <laughs> He's a little pudding Phantom. <laughs> Turns out the highest thing a Phantom can be is a haunting two random women that live together. Yeah, I'm inside gonna... a pudding cup. Right. <laughs> I'm going to manifest in a physical form. What? Oh, I love it when he does it. <laughs> I still got the cup you gave me. You keep a Budino's cup.
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you hear a lot of TV show with yeah. it? I listen and, and I listen to myself and I ask myself questions and then I answer them. Do, do you ever have a budino from the cup? No. No, that's asking too much. We can't afford a, a budino. budino. What? But everybody should have a budino. <laughs> At least twice a year. Yeah, we, we know the yeah. song. We know we the do song. Everybody song. sing the song with me. Yeah. <laughs> One budino, two, two budino. That's, that's all that's the whole song. Year. That's right. That's the end of the year. year. Winter, Winter budino. <laughs> And yes. Yes. It's a great answer. Do remember. Do you oh. recall? Oh, and look who it is. Salvatore from the TV. May I dip my finger into the whipped cream that's coming out of your head? But of course you can. What? Well, Dino, you never let us dip our fingers in your whipped cream. You but- never ask. <laughs> We're just... Two lowly people from the wrong side of the tracks, but you know, we didn't think we were worthy of your whipped cream head. What? Every side of the tracks is the right side to Budino. <laughs> Do you hear that? Yeah. So, the, so the, the left, the right, the front of the tracks, the back of the tracks, the top and on bottom. On top of the tracks, mm-hmm. under the tracks. Yep. That's All, what? Simply not how tracks work. <laughs> No, Who's please, this please, please, Hey, why are you so sad? Did Budino just step out of the tree fort and float to the ground? Hey, that's hey, Budino. 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 Are you okay, Budino? Yeah, I'm a Budino. <laughs> you. You're real. You're real and you're beautiful. Hey, it's okay to believe in Budino because Budino, he believes in you. Oh, that's my other favorite song. <laughs> it's, it's okay, okay to, to believe in Budino because Budino, 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 Budino believes in you. The end. <laughs> Budino likes you know when the song is over. Budino, I feel terrible. I, I began down the wrong road when I was in local commercial advertising, and, and I thought I was progressing. I, I was about to hostily take over this beautiful rail yard, <laughs> sending these two people to terrible places for $100 total. That's, Ooh, you're, that, that's, that's great, man. That's a, that's a low. Tell you what. 50 each. Isn't that the same as 100? Look at full Salvatore. Don't you feel terrible, Mr. Hammertrack? I... Oh, Mr. Hammertrack? Not the same as Mr. Hammertrack who used to pull the cape for Mel Far at the commercial. That's what I was just talking about a moment ago, yes. Don't you remember? What? Budino was not the caterer on that shoot. <laughs> Okay, here's your book script. Here we go. Good news, guys. Pudding for lunch again. <laughs> Thanks, Dino. Thanks, Dino. Hey. I can't eat pudding one more goddamn it's, time. I know. I asked for pizza today, but he just keeps showing up. <sighs> listen, listen, Mel. Uh, we're really going to need you to squeeze out that last two pages this time if we're going to get it in. I got no feeling in my legs anymore. I know. Mel, honey, we just need you to really just buckle down and just get through this. This is the last shot of the day, I promise. You just gotta get through. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm being told there's new pages. Um, it's gonna be two and a half pages now. So that's half a page, that's nothing to you. Yeah. You've done it before, yep. you could do it again. You're an is expert. This, is this just the legal disclaimers? Uh, you don't talk to me, you talk to her. Is this just, <laughs> is this two and a half pages of legal disclaimers? Yep. It's two pages of dialogue okay. and half a page of legal disclaimers. Yeah, look, that none sounds... of the cars have engines and people have been complaining. So, so this is our way around that. You know. Yeah. All right, Mel, you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. Do you need a bracing spoonful of a pudding? <laughs> All right, I, yeah, give me some, some pudding. Get some pudding, Go fresh from my head. <laughs> nice job, 
happened to Oh, I think there's a little bit of his brain in this. <laughs> All right, ready? Go. And, and male far superstar for a far better deal. <laughs> Am I in the shot? <laughs> Come on down to Male Far where we got all kinds of cars. They don't have engines, but they're good cars, and you can go down. <laughs> and they will drive, they will stay on the lot, but you can live on our lot, and you can stay there forever if you want. And <laughs> voting prohibited in Grand Rapids and all those sorts of goddamn places. <laughs> Oh, all right. That was good. <laughs> was that a really large font for two pages of copy? <laughs> Medina, I thought I recognized you. You thought you recognized me, a man made of pudding? <laughs> I just couldn't place you. But now you've really, you've really opened my eyes. I, I can see that I was doing the wrong thing all along. I, you're welcome to stay here. You and the mongooses and all these coyotes. And the ferrets, they can stay? I don't think they're legal. That's none of my business. But well, we'd kind of like it if you'd help us build a fourth wall so that we could actually have a home up here in our tree fort. You know what, I'll do you one better. I'll put, I'll put a window in that wall. A window that other people can climb up here and put a cup to the window and over here, Jeopardy, the TV's up to you. But... How, how about just some stairs and a door? Well, that would be good too. Yeah. That stuff gets pricey. Okay. I, <laughs> look, I don't fourth walls break easily. <laughs> We'll install a shower. Look, you can have whatever you want. I'm really? I'm gonna move my, my development somewhere else. If that's all right with you, Salvatore. Can I still invest? If I, yeah, all the way. <laughs> it's like necessary. <laughs> yeah, he's like a rich that's guy. Part of it. Yeah, you want him to invest. But you know, you're right. It doesn't matter what side of the tracks you're from. It, do, it totally does. The, the left, the right. <laughs> It does it above them, you could be below them you or be above front. You could be made of tracks. You like could be made, made of, of tracks. <laughs> That's right. Fine. <laughs> Fifty dollars each. Yes. A wall, some stairs. Yes. A window in the wall. Yes. We're, the list is getting long. <laughs> like, it's my birthday. Fine. Don't be a sport. Fine. <laughs> You guys. Okay, oh, you not guys. that much, not that much. <laughs> Budino needs some to live. Okay, okay, oh. okay. Are you home? Are you ready for a visit from Salvatore? <laughs> Do you like the sound my window makes when it opens? Listen to when I close it. Meow. <laughs> also goes to the side. Schwank. Is that a schwank window? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you've heard of them. Pella makes them. <laughs> Want to come up? Do I? Yeah, do you? Y May I come yes, up? Yes, yes. Yes. Get a running start. <laughs> and the ramp should, uh, the force of the ramp should just take you right through the window. Hold on, let me. Is that really an upgrade from the rope? <laughs> <laughs> Sweetie, I think I can hear them in there. Oh, what is. Is this the right side of the cup? <laughs> I don't know what side of the cup is right on the wrong side of the tracks. Oh, no. Because now I can only hear myself. I can't believe we ended up living here <laughs> after we made that terrible investment with that weird Jeopardy guy. It was awful, and now he's up there eating our pudding. What? Of course you're living here. You've always been here. <laughs> Who are you? I'm the phantom of this place. <laughs> Phantom of our one-bedroom apartment. Yes. You'd think we would have seen you before this. I keep a low profile. <laughs> I like your half-face mask. 
Uh, oh, thank you. I'm uh, just doing a... Uh, phantom thing. A phantom thing. <laughs> yes, We're you feel obligated. Sure, yes, sure. there's nothing wrong with no, my no, face. No, no, yes. yes. I mean, it's, it's working. It helps it looks, people yes. know yes. who I am. Right, right. It's on brand. Right. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> anyway, you've always been here. <laughs> but I distinctly remember we lived in a house. Yeah. We had a TV. Yes. Well, what about this picture of you from 1928? <laughs> that is us. That is us. Who, who are all those people behind us? And why were we at that hotel on New Year's Eve? Phantom, little help? <laughs> Budino, the phantom's back over there. He's fucking with him again. You gotta listen. I love it when he does this. Did somebody say Budino? <laughs> Did you think my name was Budino? You all look alike. <laughs> and it all happened at a place called the other side of the track. Yeah. Thanks to CISO for sponsoring today's episode. CISO is an on-demand streaming comedy service. Anytime, anywhere. Check out all of the original series, quotable classics, next day late night stand-up specials, and more. CISO is only $3.99 a month, and it's ad-free. Start your one-month free trial now. Available at CISO.com, the iOS App Store, Google Play Store, Roku, Xbox, and Amazon Video. If you love podcasts, and you probably do if you're listening to this, you don't want to miss Now Hear This. You'll be able to see more than 30 great podcasts live on six stages. Check out some of the best shows in the podcast universe, including WTF with Mark Marin, Comedy Bang Bang, Dinner Party Download, Criminal. It all happens at Now Hear This, October 28th through the 30th in Anaheim, California. Just a hop, skip, and a jump from L.A. Don't miss it. Go to NowHearThisFest.com to buy your tickets now. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com. 